Can you hear me now, everyone? No, all good, thank you. Thanks, Natalie. And we'll be... Okay, I think well, we can we can start uh, today. Thanks, uh, everyone, for a huge registration of the webinar, and also thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, I have currently about 20 slides, and I would like really to dedicate a large section to the Q&A so you can ask questions. Uh, we are not specialized in, so we do understand localization, but we are not a localization company. So uh, i be totally frank with you. We don't have like a very deep industrial know-how and deep, deep very industrial knowledge of the tracking business. We are relying on our partners. We have partners who are doing tracking and are using our devices. But for some of the projects, if you understand the business business case uh, and you really don't need the very deep uh, deep logistic uh, logistics uh, know how this should be a, a good introduction into the into the tracking and logistic logistics business. Uh, hello to Belgium. Hello to. South America, I know it's pretty early for South America and it's a little bit late for Japan. Uh, again, I, we were promising that uh, we would move to two time slots. Uh, we are planning it uh, maybe from the next year, but we are still uh, we are still on one time slot. So you can always watch the recording uh, of the webinar if, if, if that would be an issue. So let's start. I don't want to spend a lot of your time. Uh, Technical level would be intermediate. We are not going into any very deep technical details here. So uh, uh, if you would need really uh, technical stuff, so please ask uh, our support, open a ticket, go to our documentation. Uh, uh, I have, uh, the presentation is divided into three major themes. And as we have been running, uh, really tens, maybe hundreds of uh, tracking and IoT projects uh, worldwide. So uh, we see a repeating pattern, uh, which is which is troubling. And that is that the customers or the integrators or the salespeople, they very rarely uh, start with the why. And it's uh, what we are seeing in the IoT world is it's completely crucial because IoT things are nice to play with, it's, they are easy to play with, uh, but uh, once uh, you, once this gadgetry, once this playing uh, fades, uh, uh, everyone is looking hard to find the business case behind it. So uh, please, for any tracking project, it's, it's people love to know where the things are, they want to know for, but when you ask them, why, you, why do you want to know it? Where is the business case? they have very rarely answers to it. So why is completely crucial for any tracking project and why not only in the sense that we want to track it, but in the sense why you want to track it. Uh, the other theme is the data, because again, to get the proper know-how about the project is to define properly what kind of data with what kind of precision in what time frame you want to collect and you want to have, and we'll get uh, into the details and more details in the next slides. And the third theme that any tracking or logistics project sh should have is the total cost of ownership and return of investment. And I have a few slides about the total cost of ownership. And again, this is crucial because some of the decisions that you are making in the, in the project definition, they directly impact the total cost of ownership. So um, again, those are the three things that any tracking project needs to have properly defined before thinking whether I should use Sigfox, LoRa, GPS, GSM, all those, all those technologies. Uh, you should know why, what data, and what is what is what is the business benefit? What is the total cost of ownership? And the return of investment, of course, because total total cost is just the, the, the cost, but uh, the return on investment can be many benefits uh, which that you want to achieve. 
Uh, I'll start maybe with a few important documents that I really recommend. I'm repeating them all the time. We are slightly updating them. And, uh, but the, the, the two, the, the first two ones are the discovery and POC checklists. One is the general one, one is the logistics one uh, that uh, any project should have properly defined. And we think that most of the POCs fails uh, fail because the discovery is not done properly and POC definition is not done properly. Uh, the, the last two are the comparison of localization possibilities. It's basically a paper uh, descri describing the difference between GPS and Wi-Fi and Atlas localizations. And the, and the fourth one, the last one, uh, goes into more technical detail about the tracking modes that are supported in our hardware. So those are freely available documents. Please feel free to open them, to go through them. Uh, either during the presentation or, or uh, after, after we finish. Uh, uh, one of the things when we are talking about why you should be clear, uh, you should be clear what you want to, to track because you, you can track uh, different things. You can track goods, your goods. So inventory, you can track your assets, you can track people, animals, or you can track other, uh, other stuff that's uh, uh, facilities, etc. So in, even in, in the tracking, in, even in the tracking, you should you should clearly say uh, what you want what you want to track. Uh, here are some examples of the goods uh, you can do uh, with IoT. You can do cold chain monitoring, of course, together with tracking. You can do opening of package monitoring, use the light ingression. You can do, and that's the case that we are doing, it's that you want to do tilt monitoring. So when you are transporting yogurts, you know, not only are interested in the position, but you are also interested that they were not kicked over. Uh, and you can also monitor goods impacts or free falls. So if you are transporting any glass, uh, TV screens, etc. So you want to be sure that nobody banked into the, in, into the goods. Some examples of the assets monitoring. Uh, what we are seeing in logistics is machinery for like forklifts impact monitoring very often the forklifts they bank into the shelves and uh, the companies want to know uh, which operator was was causing it make all kind of machinery usage monitoring uh, okay uh, i'm i'm okay i'm i'm sorry to hear that i'm freezing from lawrence uh, if you, if you, if anybody else would have some similar issues, so please look at the, please look at the recording. Uh, okay, so uh, you can have ordering panic button also that's used uh, that used in the logistics set prevention. If you have machinery, you want you want to you want to you want to um, to track uh, assets. Uh, and for instance, opening of the doors, um, may, we have seen uh, use cases, uh, for instance, uh, ramp loading monitoring. So logistics company want to know how the ramps, the loading ramps are 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 used. And uh, for instance, the garage, the, the doors when they are open and when they are closed, so they can know the frequency of the different gates uh, in the logistics in the in, in the logistics storehouse. So those are, those were the examples. Uh, what is uh, the same thing with, which is crucial is to define the business case. Uh, those are some of the samples of the business cases. So why the customer needs to track something. Uh, please bear in mind that uh, the reason for which someone wants to monitor or to track uh, can be multifold. So it's, it's not only uh, that uh, sometimes they, they just need to know the position, but sometimes they want to know also the temperature. Sometimes they uh, want to know um, uh, whether the whether the delivery was late or early. Uh, sometimes they want it just to give it uh, as a customer additional information that the customer would appreciate. So please always talk to the customer, or if you are a customer, realize it yourself. What are all the benefits that you can get in the IoT solutions? And please. Da write it down, describe it, uh, just don't keep it in mind, prepare a, a project document. Those are inspirations. This is, uh, you can definitely come up with uh, other ideas. Uh, this, is, this is a rather important slide because everyone wants to collect the data 
uh, but very few people uh, are sure why they want to collect the data. So uh, the first thing, uh, the first thing, uh, always decide what is a must have and what is nice to have in the project definition. Uh, because you know, I can, I can have, I can want to track uh, till temperature in contact uh, with very high precision uh, each each second. But it will have impact on the total cost of ownership. It will have impact on the technology being chosen. So you should always uh, balance uh, the what is really must have, what is nice to have, and also what is the really required precision, what is the required timing, what is the required reliability, uh, uh, because that's uh, that's and and compare it to the business case. So what what if I would get the location? Uh, within one minute, what will be the impact on the on the business case? If I get the location within one hour, what will be the impact on the business case? So really, define it as something as as a minimum minimum requirements and maximum requirements. And that's pretty critical to choose. Uh, if you would be talking to an integrator, if you be talking to Sigfox to us, it's critical to understand the business case and to choose the proper uh, the proper technology for the business case. And uh, besides defining what kind of data uh, you need, you also need to define what will you do with the data, because that, that's similar important. Will you integrate the data? Will you put it into your Salesforce, into your SAP? Will, will you visualize, visualize, visualize the data? What are the processes that, are, uh, that needs to be changed? So the IoT is about process management, about process change, organization development. So what will you do with the data? That's critically important as well to understand the whole picture of the whole of the whole project. Um, then we have the the third team besides the why the data we have the total cost of ownership. Uh, we have seen uh, we have not seen all the TCOs, uh, but we have seen a couple of them, and uh, I think this 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 list can be a little bit surprising for you. Because people have a tendency that they think that the IoT project, you know, the main cost is always the hardware and the connectivity, and it tends not to be the truth. Uh, uh, hardware uh, tends to be about fifteen percent of the budget. Connectivity between fifteen and twenty-five percent of the budget. Uh, there's a lot of uh, costs being associated with, for instance, with the logistics of the devices themselves with the installation, the installation maintenance. You have the platform cost, you have the software integration cost, you have the POC cost, project management cost. So uh, we have a tendency because, you know, our devices, it's easy to calculate. It's easy to calculate the connectivity that we think that the total cost of ownership is just the price of the devices and just the price of the software, uh, just the price of the devices and the price of the connectivity. Uh, because the other hidden costs are not so easily to be calculated, but this is not the case. So uh, please, really, when you do TCO, uh, you need to have the whole project defined. So you need to know where will you store the, the IoT devices, how they will be mounted, who will mount them, how you will be tracking the serial numbers of the devices, how will you associate the devices with the pallets or with, the, with, 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 with your things with your with your uh, assets that you want to track this is this is really crucially important to to spend a lot of time in the project definition before starting any poc and before starting any 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 any, any field deployment um, okay I'm sorry, uh, Karina, that you can't hear please i have some some other people's are fine so I would recommend if you, if you have local connectivity issue, I would recommend uh, I would recommend uh, listening listening to the uh, listening to the, to the to the to the YouTube recording. We are trying hard here. Um, so um, uh, I'll switch now from the definition of the project. So when you have defined your why TCO and and the data, then you can uh, look at the different technologies that are available for the for the tracking currently uh, within the within the logistics uh, besides the classical RFIDs and classical Bluetooth tracking we are looking at three major technologies 
we are looking at GPS, at Wi-Fi, and Sigfox Atlas. GPS, uh, just to describe very, uh, very, very briefly, GPS is not emitting any data. GPS is just receiving data of very precise timing from the satellites, and according to those timings, is able to localize uh, to to localize uh, the objects within a precision generally between five meters but if, if you keep the, the gps device in one location so the precision can go down to one meter uh, there are three systems chinese russian european and and, and american um, currently available in, in the orbit so the gps chipset they they tend to support all uh, four of them uh, and uh, the advantage is precision because uh, it's really you can you can get the, and the worldwide availability it's available worldwide uh, the major issue with gps is that you really need uh, open sky above you uh, there's a misconception because we are so much used to our mobile phones uh, and we always think that our mobile phones are using gps for tracking that we think that uh, when we are in, in the meeting room and you can see your precise location that it's due to the gps but that's not the case gps really needs an open sky above you and uh, mobile phones are for most of that time using uh, wi-fi location bts location based from the base station from the base stations combined with gyroscope and they are switching to gps only in cases where we are really outdoor so really gps is uh, one of the least one of the least um, used uh, technologies in your in your in your in your, on your mobile phones uh, so the disadvantage is uh, needs open sky so if you have a pallet if you have anything in the truck we are lost because gps is not there you are not going to, to get um, uh, uh, gps inside a container without a repeater that gps repeaters you can have gps repeaters but that's again pretty complicated setup uh, and the other issue is battery consumption Lately, there were some new new chipsets uh, introduced into the market that, that are uh, able to really uh, get down even with the GPS consumption in specific cases. So it's um, uh, but uh, anyway, it's still it's still higher it's it's still higher than Wi-Fi, and uh, it definitely cannot live on the batteries for ten years as the Wi-Fi can. So. So Wi-Fi is, is still, or Cifox Atlas is still better from the battery point of, battery point of view of consumption. Um, and plus the chipsets are not free of charge, so they cost something, especially the, the, the most, um, the most uh, uh, the, those with the least consumption, they are not cheap, so they cost something. This Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi location works in such a way that the device listens to the uh, environment, listens to the uh, wireless background, and is able to catch MAC addresses from the from the environment. Basically, the same way when you want to your mobile phone to connect to the Wi-Fi. So the same way the device lists all the MAC addresses in the neighborhood and sends a few of those MAC addresses uh, in the Sigfox payload. Uh, it sends uh, to to the Sigfox backend. And the MAC addresses can be analyzed, can be sent uh, either to Sigfox again or to to Google for resolving, uh, uh, because Google and other partners they keep large databases of MAC addresses. When you send them to to MAC addresses, they are able to pinpoint you with a GPS location with a precision of 100 meters. There are open source databases, there are Google databases, there is a here database, there are several of them, so you can choose which database you want to use. Uh, the advantage is that it's cheap, low battery consumption, no open sky needed, so it works indoor as well. Disadvantage is that it's not working outside urban areas, and that the precision is around 100 meters. Uh, we have one special mold that's uh, precise up to two meters, but generally speaking, it's about uh, 100 meters. Uh, then the third one is Sigfox Atlas. It works in such a way that Sigfox analyzes uh, the signal strength uh, of the messages that's coming uh, uh, from the device and because Sigfox knows the base station locations precisely so they are able to deduce when they see the message uh, several times with different strengths they are able to deduce mathematically where the device is located. Uh, 
uh, big advantage is that it, no additional hardware is needed. So any basically any Sigfox device works with Sigfox Atlas if, if you pay for, for it. Uh, it. There's no additional battery consumption. Uh, the disadvantage is that the place needs to be covered while GPS works <coughs> everywhere uh, for the Sigfox Atlas to work. Uh, it needs to have basic coverage, at least outdoor coverage. And uh, the precision is around one kilometer, which is uh, very good for very many of the cases. Uh, but some some customers are a little bit skeptical and they prefer better precision that Wi-Fi location provides. So uh, I'll, I'll I'll mention the simple pass simple pack three plus tracker where we are combining uh, different sensors. We are combining accelerometer. We are combining the Wi-Fi tracking with accelerometer, light, light, light sensor, precise temperature, Wi-Fi sniffer, magnetometer, and read sensor. So you can you can uh, you can record and send, or you can trigger the different events by different sensors. Um, we are providing it in different hardware configurations. Uh, if you just need Wi-Fi tracker, so it's 25 euros. If it's if if you need the full equipment, if you if you for for the POCs, if you need all the sensors, so it's um, 34, uh, 34, 34 euros. And the device, I, I will now go to the to the description. What are the Wi-Fi? Uh, what is the size? A good question. The size is. Let me show it to you. Uh, I have it in green. Mm. That the size is the size of I would say if you have a chewing gum pack. So it's uh, in the slide. In the slides are dimensions, precise dimensions. I don't have a ruler here, but I think it's like five centimeters on one and a half centimeter on 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 seven millimeters. It's IP68 rated. Uh, the plastic, the plastic is UV, UV rated. We are currently playing with polycarbonate as well because uh, of some implementation where we need to get into really high high temperatures above 100 degrees above the boiling point for some of the monitorings. Uh, but it's uh, it's ultrasound welded, so it's IP68. Uh, it's IP68 rated. Uh, if, if you can see, I, I, have, I have a small, the measurements on the screen, thanks for mentioning it. I have small, I have small slide here, so I don't see the precise, I don't see the precise, uh, the precise numbers here. And I'm, I was not sure whether you can see them. Okay. Let me get to the, to the different, to the different, uh, how often does your sample pack 3 send a message? Uh, good question. Uh, it completely what we have what we are uh, what we are what we were trying to do is because all the customers have different requirements they have different requirements uh, regarding the different sensors how often the message should be sent what should be the trigger for the message sending so we developed something that we call the api6 which is a way how we communicate with the device and by which through a downlink through sigfox downlink you can configure the device very precisely according to all your needs and wishes so it can send a message uh, each uh, two seconds if, if you need to send it each two seconds it can send it uh, each uh, 70 days if you need to send it it's everything is really well configurable and i have um i have uh, i have in, in the next few slides i have a link to a form well, when you fill in the form, we are able to advise you how to set up the device uh, the best way for your concrete business case. Okay, we appreciate. Thanks for the for the. I'll 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 show you some of some of the links, and we can uh, we are trying hard with, with we are trying hard with the documentation. Uh, we are doing uh, currently. We have a documentation that it's um, divided into three different uh, uh, personas. So we have something that we call step-by-step -step instructions. 
where by using the platform that supports it, you can do it. it we, have, we have screenshot everything, so you can do it very, very simple configuration within two minutes. Then we have a documentation confluence for the middle, middle, uh, middle, middle users, I would say, for the integrators. All the platform providers, and then we have a very deep technical table that describes all the settings in, in, into very, very detail. Uh, so um, I will just go back to the back to because it was a question from Enrique here. So I was just reacting to the question from Enrique. Um, back to the tracking with simple hardware. Uh, Sigfox Atlas, uh, Sigfox Atlas supported always. It's just it's just a matter of your uh, subscription to to Sigfox. Uh, because you need to pay extra money for the Sigfox Atlas to be to be enabled, uh, and uh, what is really cool, and I think that it's very much undervalued in, in the logistics, is that for I would say 60, 70 percent of all the use cases, the one kilometer precision is, is is fine enough, because you know when the goods left the factory, you know whether in your major logistics um, um, store than when they are crossing the border and when they are arriving to the customer. So one kilometer precision, even it seems to be low. So in most cases, we think it's it's a very good solution uh, for, for many of the logistic cases. OK. Uh, I will I will reply to, to, to Michael in a few minutes, in a few in a few slides. So uh, precision depends always on the Sigfox coverage. Uh, that, that's for sure. Uh, location can be skewed really by big margin uh, if the object is on a mountain side. Because if 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 the object is on a mountain side, so it can be very well seen from the base station that it's far away, and then the Sigfox can be Sigfox can be um, uh, erroneously can can report can report the, the position. So uh, you should always see it as, as a series of data, and you should uh, you should uh, you should um, how you call it um, you should level you should level the the, the 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 location points, and if you have some extra point, you you should you should ignore it from the front row. So so it needs some kind of data processing even after location, and this is that it costs costs some money additional to the fee. I will just I will. Finish those four slides, and then I'll go back to the to the to the to the questions. If you can hold on for a few minutes. Next slide. Then we have the Sigfox Atlas Wi-Fi mode, or mode, because we are supporting more business logic with it. It's a it's a new service by Sigfox, uh, where uh, again for additional fee, uh, it sends two MAC addresses. To here, global uh, company, which is getting the date, location data from Facebook. So uh, all your Facebook uh, application on your mobiles are collecting the MAC addresses, sending it to Facebook, and Facebook, and here is is sending those uh, MAC addresses and those locations through the here company. Uh, uh, there are uh, two advantages. Major is easy to implement because you just buy the service and you get directly the gps location from sigfox so you don't need to process anything uh, the other big advantage is that normally when you send the multiple mac addresses uh, when you send the mac addresses to google for the, the location resolution google accepts it only if you submit two mac addresses so if you collect just one mac address you are not able to locate the device you need to resort to sigfox atlas like a fallback, but with uh, with uh, Sigfox Wi-Fi Atlas, even if just one MAC address is 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 listened to, and and so Sigfox Atlas is able to resolve it, it's automatically skewed. So you don't get this very precise position because you know on one MAC address you can do the position within 50 meters. So that is um, an artificial artificial error added to the position, but you can get it with better precision than with just pure Sigfox Atlas. And there's also automatic fallback to Sigfox Atlas. And um, um, uh, in uh, the, the, the issue with, with Sigfox, one of the big issues that we are, and we were, we were talking with Atlas about, uh, with Sigfox about it very, 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 very into very lengths, is that uh, 
the MAC addresses cannot be compressed. So they are unique and they cannot be compressed. There is no, they can be hashed, but they, they cannot be compressed. So, and because they are six byte long, so it's, you cannot, uh, you cannot get any more information uh, beside besides the besides the two MAC addresses into one Sigfox message, which is 12 bytes, 12 bytes in, in the size. So you you have no way how to say this is, for instance, a Sigfox location message, or you have no way to say that this is uh, this this is a free fall or this is something has happened. So uh, what we are um, uh, what we are doing in uh, with our devices is that we always send two messages. We always send a message because we have three allowed consumption and we can allow to to to, to send more messages. So we we are always one message that that tells you that tells you the following message will be six at last and also tells uh, what kind of event has happened or you can also append some some other things like temperature into that message and the next message will be six at last location. We have one specific mode that does nothing else than just sends uh, we call it stupid mode one because it cannot do anything else but it, you set it up and it just sends the sigfox uh, sigfox atlas locations and you just need one message so it, really if you want to, to to have many messages or you are limited by battery capacity somehow so the stupid mode one is the one that provides you the the location with the uh, lowest battery consumption uh yeah that that's i think uh that that's for the sequence atlas uh then we have we have a mode that we call the default wi-fi mode where we are encoding and we are not sending two mac addresses but we are sending three mac addresses and we are sending those three mac addresses within two messages we are sending the first mac plus half of the b of, of the second mac address then in the second message, we are sending the other half of the second MAC address and the last MAC address. We are able to add the mode in which the, the device is at. Uh, we can add the type of event, what has happened. And the thing is that uh, it, it, it's, uh, those messages are not automatically resolved by Sigfox, but there must be some resolution uh, which you will have to do on your platform. So. Uh, very often in the tracking, you know, for instance, already the location of your stores and you know the MAC addresses. So you don't need to pay either to Sigfox or to Google. You can have your own whitelisted MAC address. And when you, when you, when you discover that uh, the MAC addresses that you are collecting from the devices are of your own, in your own stores, you don't need to do the resolution from Sigfox or Google. That's one advantage. The other one is that you can choose your own resolution, your own provider of, of the of the resolution between MAC addresses and and uh, and GPS location. Uh, for instance, in the IOFROG platform that I'll mention shortly, we are using Google. Uh, we, we we think that the Google data is a little bit better than than, than Facebook, but it depends country by country and use case by use case. So. Uh, if you would be very sensitive either to pricing or very sensitive to precision, I would recommend doing uh, POC and comparing it uh, with a Sigfox Atlas with uh, a here database is better for you or uh, three MAC addresses with Google location is better for you. Price wise, they are roughly the same. Uh, so if you send all the data to Sigfox and all the data to Google, price wise, it's, 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 they, are, they are roughly on the same level. Especially if, if 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 the amount of data is 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 larger, so uh, they are price wise they are comparable. Uh, but if if again you need to have platforms that support it, and you need to have um, uh, to to have uh, to have um, you need to do some integration work. Uh, and then uh, there was a question, how are we able to do precision below 10 meters? Uh, that's the mode that we call precision Wi-Fi. And we did it for some of the partners that are implementing it. Uh, what we are he doing here is that we are collecting and recording the MAC addresses into the device. So we are, when we see a new MAC address, we record the MAC address into the device. 
we uh, we uh, assign it a pointer. We assign it a, a one byte one byte value, and we send also this pointer together with the MAC address uh, up uh, in the uplink. So that that allows us in one message to say, and then when we are when we are seeing when we so you you have basically two modes. You have the learning mode and you have the field mode or the implementation mode. In the learning mode, you collect the MAC addresses and you press the button uh, in different location. For instance, in your storehouse or on the way, if 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 if, if, if your uh, logistics tracks is short, so you can you can collect the MAC addresses on a shorter way. So you have you you know basically the fingerprints. Uh, of the different locations, I'm not sure whether I describe it properly. It's just, I think it's, it's very well described in the text. Uh, but uh, what we are then doing is in the field when you switch when you go to the, to the field deployment, so the device sees uh, five MAC addresses and it sends not the MAC addresses themselves, but the, it sends just the pointers. So it sends five one byte numbers. Pass the RSSI, pass the the strengths the 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 strengths of the strengths of the on on the of the signal, and uh, through trilateration, not through trilateration, through basically uh, you use you use mathematical formulas where you are able to do fingerprinting. So you are comparing uh, uh, known patterns of location to the to the new, to the new location. And because we have very very good uh, data density, have basically five MAC addresses with five strengths, you are able to do in a control environment, uh, in, in one store or in one in one logistics, you are able to do precision of up to two, up to two two meters, which for some customers is critical because they want to know where their coils are stored within a, within a factory, and uh, that's uh, that's doable, and it's far cheaper technology than and it's kind of RFID and RFID. UWB uh, uh, tracking. Uh, we definitely cannot go as because with uh, with ultra wide band you can go up to five centimeters precision. So we we cannot go to we cannot go that deep. But two meters two meters is uh, is is uh, achievable. So uh, and this is this is basically uh, and I I think uh, rather rather. Um, uh, use, useful table, which provides you the comparison of the different options uh, that you have. Uh, you, uh, there's uh, the precision, the battery life, uh, uh, whether you are able to report any kind of event, uh, whether the Wi-Fi module is required or not, whether the support, whether it's supported by our platform, and whether a special Sigfox tariff is uh, required is needed. So you have this this table. Therefore, when I was when I was preaching the discovery phase, you have many options how to set up the devices uh, properly, and therefore you, you really need to to understand the business case and use case before before choosing a technology. Uh, I was already mentioning the stupid mode one. The stupid mode one uses uh, just Sigfox uh, uh, Sigfox uh, Wi-Fi Atlas, so it sends only only messages. It doesn't send anything else. Stupid mode two is just sends uh, zero messages, sends empty messages. So if you are interested in just Atlas location and nothing else, uh, this is this is usable. And because the messages are very short, it 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 consumes less energy, and also the deliverability or the 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 probability that the message will get delivered it is higher because the shorter the, the shorter the Sigfox message is the better the probability that it will get delivered. Uh, if you don't mind, I will have, I, I think I have like two or three more slides uh, before I'll get to the final ones and I'll get to the to the answers. Uh, one of the things that we, uh, we are trying to differentiate is uh, that we are uh, supporting both modes how to access the data. So we have published uh, we have published uh, open specification what the data means, uh, how to control the devices. So you don't need to pay us for uh, any kind of monthly or yearly recurring fees for the platform access. So you can implement any platform. You can connect it directly to Azure. You can connect it directly to 
to SAP to HANA, you can direct, connect it directly to Amazon or to AWS or to Google, whatever you want to connect it. It's, it's free, like, uh, you, you are free to do so. And uh, all the documentation is at our knowledge base at ask.simplehardware, simplehw.eu. Uh, if you wouldn't be able to find any documentation, just open a ticket or contact us on the chat and we'll be, we'll be, we'll be glad to help you and to guide you. Uh, we have a partner which is called IOFROG. It's an IoT platform that supports not only our devices, it currently supports about 30 or 40 devices, uh, where you can register and you, you get three months free of charge uh, platform access. Uh, it supports all the, all the uh, features and all the functions of our devices. Uh, it supports uh, geofence geofencing, it supports uh, uh, all kinds of GPS, Wi-Fi location, so if, if you want to, and it scales pretty well. Uh, if you would be interested, please please try the IOFROG. We have also a separate webinar that we were, we were running about the, uh, the functions of IOFROG and we'll have one more webinar coming in a few weeks uh, that will be describing some of the new features that IOFROG provides. But we think that IOFROG currently is the best platform for any kind of Sigfox project. Uh, the big advantage is that it's uh, not a universal platform, so it doesn't support MQTT, it doesn't support uh, I don't know what, what uh, whatever Wi-Fi Wi-Fi connectivity. It's really purely dedicated uh, to communicate very nicely with Sigfox backend to do the proper device management, device provisioning, uh, connectivity management, and it also can be white labeled. So uh, we have few SOs, few Sigfox operators that are using it as their own platform. If you would be interested in white branding the Sigfox, uh, the IOFROG, the IOFROG platform, please feel free to contact us or IOFROG directly, and they are able to white label it for you. Uh, and here is the link. Uh, we have a, a, a form uh, which is a little bit lengthy. But if, if you really need any specific uh, device settings, uh, please feel free to, to fill in the form and we'll try to help you uh, to set up the devices uh, the best way for your business case. Now, I'll get before the, the final slides, I will get to the, to the, the quickly to the questions that uh, appeared here. Okay, Mike, how many private Wi-Fi routers do we need to get precise location inside and does it work if these routers are vertically aligned? Yes, uh, uh, so far we are in the, in the I have, uh, we have some white papers that are describing the, uh, describing the, and describing the, uh, the, the arithmetics behind the precise location. We can share it with, if you drop me an email so I can share the white paper with you. Uh, it's because it's a fingerprinting, so it's the first thing that the routers for Wi-Fi precision, they don't need to be connected to internet. It just, you know, they are just like beacons. They are just emitting, emitting their MAC address, so they don't need even to be connected to internet. And you don't need to, to know their locations because you are not mathematically calculated it, calculating it from their, from their positions, but you have like <clears throat> 10 reference points and you are comparing the field deployment with those reference points. So it doesn't matter. Uh, you really don't, it, they can be on different floors. They can be not even your floors. So it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter uh, where, the, where, where the routers are. Uh, and they don't need to be private. They can be even public routers. So, so this mode works even if you go out of the, if if you go out of the out of the factory. So it still works. Uh, of course, if if you if, if you would see because we are currently limited limited with the one byte uh, tag. So uh, if you would see more than two hundred and fifty six Wi-Fi routers, so we would we we are recycling them then. So it's, it's getting more complicated, but if, if you are, if you have a short route between you and the final destination, you can use the precision mode even outside of the factory. So it doesn't need to be your private routers. Uh, 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 Alfred, uh, so the sudden message is including Wi-Fi sniffing since Wi-Fi sniffing also comes in power. But basically what we are for the Wi-Fi sniffing, we are moving 
uh, there are two things. The, the, the first one is one Wi-Fi sniffing takes approximately one message. So with the, uh, therefore in the table, if you do, if you, we have a total capacity of 30,000 messages. So if you would send for each Wi-Fi sniffing, you would send a message. So you would get a total of 15,000 Wi-Fi scans and 15,000 messages. Uh, what we are currently moving to is uh, something that's called a passive mode in Wi-Fi scanning, where we are able to get a little bit better sensitivity. Uh, we'll be seeing more Wi-Fi addresses, and it also allows us to even more uh, decrease the consumption for the Wi-Fi sniffing. So it's, 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 it's working for us here. And for the next batch of the Wi-Fi trackers, we are going to use uh, we are going to use this Wi-Fi passive mode of scanning, which uh, really improves it, it improves the sens sensitivity of the of the Wi-Fi. Uh, uh, if the device can sniff only one MAC address, uh, that's uh, uh, if you are using Sigfor's Wi-Fi Atlas. So Sigfor's Wi-Fi Atlas is able to resolve it. If you are not using Sigfox Wi-Fi Atlas, so you need to have a fallback to Sigfox Atlas, so you'll get the one kilometer, one kilometer position. Google is not going to give you. Google is not going to return to you any results unless you send them to MAC addresses. Uh, does it provide locations through Wi-Fi? No, we are not communicating through Wi-Fi. Uh, the only way how to get the information out of the device is through is through Sigfox, so we are not using Wi-Fi for communication. On your sample pack, uh, and it's also important because we are in the Wi-Fi, we are all, uh, also listening, so only listening, so from the, any kind of radio interference point of view or, uh, or any kind of um, uh, regulatory, regulatory stuff, we are not sending out any messages through Wi-Fi, we are just listening on the Wi-Fi. On, the, on your sample pack CEO, do you provide programming access to your process? Uh, um, uh, no, we don't provide programming. As we don't. Uh, to say the truth, it's the first time I, I am I'm I'm seeing this kind of, of this kind of request. We are not. We are trying to achieve the business logics through API six. So and we are still adding some more modes and some more functions. So if you would have any business requirements, please uh, talk to us. Uh, whether it can be achieved by the current modes, we are currently have, we do currently have fifty or sixty modes in Simple Pack, or whether we can add uh, another mode. It would be uh, uh, it's a little bit artistry. Uh, so we are no longer doing it in assembly. Simple Pack Two was all programmed in assembly, and Checkfox is still programmed in assembly. Uh, Checkfox uh, contains one hundred twenty thousand lines of assembly assembly line code. So. We do really low level programming. Uh, so simple pack, uh, simple pack 3.0, it's, it's, it's already C language, but we are, for instance, not using any HAL drivers. We are using low level, low level drivers and we are very close to the processor in order to, uh, to really have one of the lowest power consumptions achievable. So we are working closely with SD micro to fine tune all the MEMS and all the processes really to be uh, to be at what what is what is what is what is what, what is what, what, what is achievable and so it doesn't make any it doesn't make that much sense to to because you wouldn't be able to to, to it would be pretty i think complicated to even to manufacture it because you have you, you need to keep in mind that sigfox in manufacturing it's it's a little bit more complicated than any kind of smartwatch or whatever, because you have the IDs, you have the you have the private keys. So in manufacturing, uh, Sigfox, it's 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 not comparable to other electronics. It's, it's it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty complicated in the mass manufacturing. I mean. Uh, Okay, six forces limitation of message transmission of ten minutes minimum. How would you provide frequent messages with MAC address? Uh, you have. Uh, Two options uh, we are we are supporting in simple pack we are supporting sending just one frame so if you have uh, good connectivity and you don't need the three three uh, three uh, three frames repetition you can use just fr one frame and it makes sense for many of the location services because you are 
you you are you don't care if one of the points is missing but you are more interested in the density of the points so for many of the use cases uh, i will just ask my colleague to to for a power supply just give me a sec <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll be I'll, then. I'll have to be quick because I don't have to charge you here. And my colleague left, so uh, so I'll be very quick. Uh, so you can use one frame. Uh, there's one option. The other one that you can use 600 bits encoding. Uh, basically, uh, we support it in SimplePack uh, 3 as well. It just you send it a specific download, and you switch to one frame, and you switch to 600 bits encoding. And in this case, you are able to send 18 times more messages than in classical configuration. So you are able to send a message each, uh, at least in RC1, you are able to send a message each 50 seconds. Again, send me an email if you would need any more details on that. Uh, 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 I, uh, can you recommend a beacon? Any beacon would work. So. Uh, you know, any nine nine dollar Wi-Fi beacons from China would work. Don't connect it to internet; just have it as as, as any kind of beacon. Is Presence Briefing good, good just for repeated visits? Yeah, Presence Briefing is basically good for only repeated visits. That that's that's for sure. You cannot have you cannot do a global tracking with the Precision Wi-Fi. Uh, what are the recommended setup for the for the customer? Um, again, that if, if you could rephrase the question, I would I would try to remember to, to reply, but I don't understand what is the recommended setup for the customer. It depends on the business case. I have a connection to platform development company. Can I build own platform for my customers? Definitely, we have a, even a progr program. If you go to our main website, so we have a partners uh, part section there, and we are currently working with beside IOFROG. We are we are working with ng platform we are working with m2m vertical platform we are working with sigfox iot agent platform so so we have many platform supporters uh, okay does api 5 support the downlink yeah definitely api 5 supports the downlink as well so it just api 5 is a is a previous definition how we communicate with with our devices uh, and it's uh, this one is API 5 is for simple pack 2o so uh, if you have simple pack 2o you need to to use API 5 API 5 uh, API 6 uh, should be future proof so even for simple pack uh, for other simple packs it should be uh, for other version of simple pack it will be it will be usable even in the future we are using API 6 for simple pack 3o so few few more slides uh, those are the screenshots from the platform, you know, classical location, lo location, but feel free to, 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 to play with it yourself. Uh, again, please don't do pilots uh, because, or at least do pilot only when you are sure why you do the pilot, why you do the POC. Um, discovery, please spend 80% of your time in discovery and 20% on your POC. Uh, or on the execution, spend far more time in in describing the use case, describing, calculating the TCO. I know it's a pain in the ass. I know it's it's no it's doing POC is more fun, uh, but uh, do the do do really the annoying stuff. Talk far more with the customers. Ask questions. Be open with them because uh, we we see like. 90% of POC go into vain because they are not properly defined and there's no discovery done before. Call to action. Uh, choose also one problem because one of the, with many many often we see within the integrators or with the SOs they go to a logistics company and there are myriads of things that they want to track and myriads of things that they want to solve. Please just always solve one problem. Just one one use case. Don't do everything. Don't do five five different use cases with the customer. It's not going to it's not going to work. Cal calculate ROI TCO, prepare discovery, prepare solution validation. 
get budget approval and do POC only after you are sure with all the budget, with the final budget. Uh, I would do even a POC after the board approval. So unless you have you have uh, you have you are clear about the finances, I wouldn't do a POC. POC is definitely not a sales tool. Uh, we have the Sigfox kit for deep indoors with our GSM link. We know the location, how you report location and distance. Leonard, can you please write me an email? I don't get precisely the question. What kind of Sigfox kit do you have? Uh, I think I just got the, I just got the, I just got the electricity, so it will be better. Okay. And it is your intention to provide fixation system as add-on like clip sticker and mounting wearable. That's what are currently our main uh, pain point because uh, one of the things uh, that's what we are doing is that we are providing at least 3D drawings and we let we leave we leave this up to our partners to do to do the custom holdings and custom custom because you know we have really hundreds of customers worldwide so it's not easy always to do a proper a proper proper mounting uh, and it's true that we were planning to do them uh, we just didn't have the capacity so we it, it's basically as you have the phone uh, and you have the you have the enclosure around the phone so we should have the same one for, for this one Currently, the best way to 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 stick it is to have double-sided tape. It works pretty well everywhere. And if you need industrial 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 holding or belt clip, so for the POC, we would recommend doing a 3D print. Again, we have the stencil files uh, uh, online, so you can use those, and you can just print it on your on your 3D printer. For the, and for the field, we are able to produce them if, 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 you, if you make an order of 5,000 or something. So we are definitely able to, to, to produce the, the clip holders on account of mounting. So, so do you publish a list of these partners? Uh, you mean a list of the partners? Um, we, li we, we publish the list of the... We have a list of partners in the partner section. If you would be more specific, who built add-ons? Um, uh, currently, the, we have one Swiss partner who builds add-ons. And uh, no, uh, if you would contact sales, so we would we would we would try to find out a partner in, in your location for your specific use case. Yeah, uh, IO Frog. So again, we don't as simple hardware. We don't we don't ourselves we don't provide any kind of platform. But with IO Frog, IO Frog currently has native application for uh, Android Play Store and native application for Apple iOS Store. So uh, I have uh, all the location comes with the native applications uh, for the for the um, for the mobile phone, and they can also be white branded. So uh they are ready to be to be for instance branded in the in the colors of the customer so if you have a customer and you want to 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 give them uh tracking uh directly in their colors so you can you can you can do the labeling of even of the mobile application not only of the web pages so this is the the the, the call to action uh, time for your questions. I have uh, you were asking the whole time for the questions, so uh, so thanks for them. I really appreciate it. Uh, about the uh, 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 Leonard, I will I will take your question about the access station many offline. If if I can, please contact me on the on the on the chat after the or through email after the after the conversation to understand what you want to achieve precisely. Uh, again, we have we have prepared some more documents uh, uh, on our Ask platform. So, for instance, there's a, a complete new document uh, around, around Sigfox coverage, how to densify the Sigfox coverage, how to assess Sigfox coverage, what it means indoor, deep indoor. So, please uh, feel free to download those white, those white papers. If any of the recommendation would be really uh, missing, we are ready to 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 
to get it together together and also please uh, we have some more webinars coming i think they'll be quite interesting the next one will be about monarch so sequence devices traveling uh, between continents between different radio zones then we have the specific webinar about Sigfos coverage, how to densify it, about the micro micro base stations uh, and what to do about it. Uh, we have uh, new features of IOFROG in the end of October. I'll be doing that from Spain because I'm attending the Spain IoT event in Barcelona. Uh, ingredients of successful IoT project delivery from pilot to final uh, project. That's a webinar that, that the theme that has won our competition. So we are doing this webinar. And then uh, we do one about the cold chain monitoring uh, in, a, in November. It will be called here in, in Europe. So uh, it, it, it will be appropriate time for to do a cold chain monitoring webinar. Uh, feel free to register for them. If you want to purchase, we have the call to action. We need to sell. We need to sell. So we have the call to action. Uh, you can buy, you can always buy the simple pack Wi-Fi tracker. Uh, it's it's in stock for RC1 and I see it's coming uh, to be in stock. We are we are sold out for RC24, uh, but we are going to restock pretty soon. Thanks for the nice feedback that I'm receiving. Thanks, thanks a lot. I can thanks Banks, thanks Peter Wolf, thanks Sebastian, thanks Guido. Um, uh, if you would if, if you would like to come up with some new themes of the webinar, you are welcome to submit them, and I'm happy to do a webinar about the, the, the other topics. So thanks a lot for your attention, and happy trekking with Sigfox. Thanks. Bye bye.